Hello students, am I audible? Am I audible and clearly visible? Yes? Let me check. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Am I audible? Students, quickly share the link with your friends. Yes, I'm clearly audible, right? Yes. Hello. Okay, great. Okay. So, good evening students. Welcome to Vedanto Neet English. I am your master teacher, Gopika. So, today we are going to be learning Chicken Gunia and Dengue, which is an added syllabus to your human health and diseases. If you see the whole NCRT, new NCRT, old NCRT, there's only three lines mentioned about it, telling about Chicken Gunia and Dengue. But then this time, NTI has mentioned it as a separate topics. That means you have to know more than just those three lines. So, I am here to do that. And I think this is the first time English chicken gunia and dengue is done actually. Okay, so quickly share with your friends whoever are preparing for need, whoever needs to know a lot about chicken gunia and dengue. It's a very short session because after that we have a new year surprise, right? Okay, before I start the session, let me give you a clarity about the organism and environment because most of the students are very confused. Okay, students look here. According to your NTA syllabus, they have mentioned organism and environment, population, which was supposed to be a semicolon or whatever, population, interaction, and mutualism, it's continuing. So this organism and environment itself is a topic from your NCRT, which was 13.1 in your NCRT. Okay, 13.1 in your NCRT. So this topic was what I have done. Okay, if you see, if you see, look here. This is your old NCRT where you have the chapter 13. In your new NCRT is chapter 11. Here you can see organism and its environment as 13.1. Okay, so that itself is a whole unit by itself, like a small topic by itself. So that is why we have done that. Okay, even though even in case NTA has made a mistake telling that instead of putting organism and population, organism and population is the chapter name. They have mentioned organism and its environment. So we cannot ignore we cannot ignore because every time, every single time, adaptation, one question comes. That means four marks, right? One more question might come, eight marks, right? So we cannot lose that eight marks. And if you see, this is how your new NCRT looks. Only population is given chapter number 11. That is the reason we have done that. So those who have a doubt, those who are telling that, ma'am, it's an error. Uh, it is supposed to be organism and population. Even if it's an error, we cannot afford to wait until the error is corrected. Because you can see frog and frog and insect. It became cockroach. What if they add? Right. So let's be on the safer side. Let's just learn what is there. Okay. Yes. Yes, you can definitely expect questions from us. Whatever NTA has modified, you can expect questions from it. Are we ready? Why can I not see any fire emoji in the chat box? Has your energy drained because it's going to be New Year? Is, it, is, is that like your energy is low? My energy is high because it's New Year. Right? Yes, quickly. Let's fill the chat box with fire emoji. This is not what I'm expecting. Come on, students. I'm going to cancel the class. If you people are going to be dull on a last class of 2023 okay this is my last class of 2023 agreed yes come on do it yes thank you sanvi students fill the chat box and we will start the class no delay no delay yes okay look here this beautiful mosquito Okay, this beautiful mosquito is the heroine of today's class. Okay, you people have to give the respect. You people have to give the importance that you give for any other uh, Bollywood, Hollywood, Collywood actress. This is our heroine for today. Okay, yes. New year, <laughs> new year, no new life is going to happen. Okay, but the new year is important for every single student who is going to write need, right? As a teacher, it is important for us, same way for you people. Okay, so students, dengue, dengue, 
we say it both the ways, right? In fast mode, we say dengue. Otherwise, we say dengue. So, when you talk about dengue, the first thing I would like to say is, dengue is also known as your break. Okay. Okay, students, don't worry. You will get all these notes on my telegram as well as on Vedantu Neat English telegram. Okay. So, students, dengue is also known as your break bone okay break bone fever you'll be like what break bone fever who will come and break our bones no one will come and break our bones the moment we are infected with dengue we will feel the pain we will feel a very very severe pain as if our bones are breaking have any of you fractured uh neela it is in health human health and diseases human health and diseases <laughs> yeah, Shreya sir. <laughs> Look at what Shreya sir has told students. Dengo is the zebra of mosquito. Dengo is not the zebra of mosquito, but this this heroine is the zebra of mosquitoes. Okay, Shreya sir. Aedes. Aedes is the zebra of mosquitoes. Okay. So by the end of this class, sir, I will teach sir what is this mosquito? Why is this mosquito the heroine? Uh, why is it causing break bone, uh, you know, break bone uh, fever also. Okay. Okay. Human health and diseases. So students look here. This is called as break bone fever because the pain that you experience when you are infected with your dengue virus is you feel like your bones are breaking. You know, if you ever had a fracture, you know how bad it pains, right? Every time you move, it pains more. Okay. So this is another name for your dengue. Now, who causes this? Who is the causative agent? Right? Who causes this? Your causative agent is none other than your dengue virus. You'll be like, wow, ma'am, so easy you made our life. I didn't make it easy, students. It's dengue virus. So, the virus that causes dengue is called as your dengue virus. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> dengue virus. Yes, yes, heroine always causes trouble, females always causes trouble, that is what all the males keep telling, no? Oh, she's eating my brains today, she's, she's, what, when, whenever we don't talk, they'll be like, oh, today is a peaceful day, today is the most peaceful day of my life, right? So, all these males who are spreading these informations around, no, that females keep, you know, eating my head, you know, all that. That is the example why this mosquito also feels itself as a heroine and is causing this fever, okay? So... I don't know what to say. Okay, so yes. So students, dengue virus causes this. Now dengue virus, which family does it belong? Okay, which family does it belong? Students, if you check the exact virus, you can see it is also known as Flavi virus. Okay, so look here. The family that this virus belongs to, the family that this virus belongs to is called as Arbovirus. This is the family that this virus belongs to. Now, what does this mean? Students, Arbo means your arthropod arthropod bone virus. That means, if this virus is there, if there is no mosquito, if there is no arthropod mosquito, right? if there is no mosquito, this entire thing, this virus does not have any other job. If the vector itself is not there, Right. If YouTube is not there, you will not be able to see Gopika ma'am live. Correct. Same way, if the vector is not there, then this whole virus, the existence of this virus does not matter to us. Clear? That, clear? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, arthropod born virus okay the arthropod who is helping the vector that is helping is your mosquito i'll tell about the heroine i'll give the I'll, I'll disclose the name of the heroine we are launching the heroine today on this channel okay yes human health and diseases i will be taking on 7th jan next year okay i'll, I'll not take it this year i'll take it next year okay 7th jan i'll be taking okay so it's a sunday so i hope 100 Person attendance will be there. Okay, students, so this much is clear. Okay, what is happening? Yes. Full, the moment you people hear hero in hero, no? Full one extra energy comes from somewhere. I don't know from where that energy comes, but the energy is 
look at the energy in the chat box the moment i told hero in last time i remember i told priyanka chopra full energy but if i tell students ads egypt ai if i say dengue if i say chicken gunia virus no energy ma'am what are you saying i should i should always pull in bollywood people for my students energy to be high yes or no yes okay students fine this much is clear oh one second one second let me know if my voice is clear okay any time you are facing a trouble with my voice let me know voice is clear yes okay great yeah voice is clear no okay students so it is an arthropod born virus okay and the family that it belongs to is called as arbovirus okay it is also you can also say it is this virus is a single okay single stranded rna virus it has what is the genome that is has it is single stranded rna okay like we have dna the genome or what is present here is your rna okay the it is a single stranded rna because of this also we can also call this variety as we can also call this variety as flavi ribo virus okay flavi ribo virus where this becomes the genus name and ribo means rna okay ribo means rna and virus do i have to explain nothing so this is all about the causative agent or the virus that is causing it okay so let's quickly summarize the virus that causes dengue is dengue virus which belongs to a family called arbovirus arbo means arthropod born virus that means an, an arthropod should be there for this virus to get transmitted okay virus to get transmitted then you will be like ma'am why have you put this beautiful you know um heroine's photo and why are you not explaining about it students mode of transmission i told you if this virus needs to be active or need to show that i am a villain of the uh, you know entire plot they need this heroine okay who is help that they are going to take mode of transmission is because of a mosquito which is called as aedes aegypti aedes aegypti this is the name of this mosquito okay this mosquito can also be called women is also called tiger i don't know students i am just telling okay this is also called as tiger mosquito tiger mosquito why is it called tiger mosquito because look at the way it looks it has those stripes can you see black and white stripes can all of you see this image clearly yes or no okay they can see if you can see there is white black black white stripes all over this okay this is called as your aedes aegypti this is not your anopheles okay aedes aegypti uh, anopheles is more of a brown color aedes aegypti is more of a black color so it has a black and white texture because of which you can also call it as your tiger mosquito okay this is the mode of transmission this virus takes to reach any host yes <laughs> students this uh, heroine <laughs> this heroine's life is very very uh, what is it khatarnak no what i forgot that there was this one show no some khatron ki khiladi types this uh, mosquito's life is why i'll tell you so this aedes aegypti aegypti which is also called as tiger mosquito is the mode of transmission for this virus okay this is the mode of transmission clear mode of transmission here comes some clarification okay here i'll give you some clarification your mode of transmission is by who who is the heroine in the movie come on quickly tell me the name who is the heroine quick quick I'm also checking your chats here, so it moves fast. That's not moving faster. Come on, students, tell me who is the heroine. 
Yes, very correct, Gautam. Good job. Okay, so it is what your ADs. Okay, ADs Egypt type. Okay, underline. Now, students, you will be asking, ma'am, why only female? Why only female? Okay, this female ADs Egypti, right? This female. Aedes aegypti is causing the mode of transmission or it is acting like a vector. Students, what do I mean by vector, students? Can any of you tell me vector's explanation in just one word? One word, quickly. Yes, correct. Aedes aegypti. Tell me the vector. What is vector meaning? Why am I telling this mosquito is a vector? Okay, quickly tell me why, why am I telling this mosquito is a vector? <coughs> yes, good job. Most of you told the answer. Aedes aegypti. Students, tell the full name, okay? Aedes aegypti, okay? Okay, so students, look here. The thing is, it is called a vector because it acts like a vehicle. Okay, it acts like a vehicle. So that means now you are transporting from one place to another, right? It acts like a vehicle. So when it is doing that job, okay, it acts like a vehicle to transport something from one place to another, it is also having a benefit. Now, I will tell you why only female Aries Egypti, why not a male female Egypti? It's because students, this female needs our blood. Whose blood? Our blood. Okay, it needs our blood because of the iron and protein content in our blood to develop and to nourish their eggs. Okay, sad, sad woman life students, it has to feed the family. That is why it is using our blood. But what is happening? This mosquito does not know that it is infected. It is biting one person, moving to another person to develop the egg. Okay, poor family story this is. Okay, poor family story, but sad it became the villain. Okay, so let's say why we are saying it is, why female uh, Aedes aegypti is used is because it needs the iron and protein from human blood for what for development okay of their eggs so for development of eggs clear to all of you clear to all of you and they also have the apparatus to bite us and you know to uh, you know take the blood for them to nourish or for their you know development to happen okay for the development of the egg so i hope this doubt is clear to all of you why it is only female ladies egypt and not male ladies egypt because males are not capable of biting females are the ones who always bite everyone's head and you know give everyone stress and all that no that's what you people say so look here mosquito also is doing the same thing <laughs> yeah yes so this is clear now students what actually happens how is this mosquito being able to do this so it is simple story okay simple let's just draw two three people in the story okay now students this is one person <laughs> now what is happening this person is infected with dengue okay this person is infected with dengue that's why this person is drawn in yellow color okay now what is going to happen this mosquito is going to come and bite who is going to come and bite Aedes aegypti it does not know this person is infected or not this mosquito comes and bites okay it takes in the blood required for the development of the egg now what happens see humans we as a host we get cured we take medicines we take other uh, you know uh, treatments and we get cured of dengue but the problem is once this Aedes aegypti in you know uh, bites a person who is infected oh sorry students <laughs> bites a person who is infected with dengue this mosquito lifetime entire life of this mosquito this virus is going to be there because this mosquito does not get rashes this mosquito does not have respiratory problem this mosquito's platelets count is not decreasing why will the mosquito then go check for a cure? Correct? We are getting all these symptoms. That is the reason why we are going to a hospital and getting cured. This mosquito is not even understanding that it has a dengue virus inside. So, this mosquito will now go do what? It will go and bite a person who does not have dengue. Okay? 
it will bite a person who does not have dengue now what has happened this infected mosquito has come and bit a person who did not have dengue which will lead him right which will make him affected story is clear story clear simple story okay you take you take some uh, gossip rumors from one person give it to a person who does not know now that person will become the news uh, you know reader he will spread the gossip to another person similar to that okay that is what this mosquito is doing right right yes fine so this is how this whole thing has happened okay this whole thing has happened because this mosquito did not know that it is infected with dengue virus because it does not have any symptoms clear fine <laughs> is this clear yes great one minute yes yes ha huh. if you people don't kill mosquito after listening to this emotional story then uh, hospital people have to ignore you because you will have dengue by then okay yes great fine <laughs> one second students okay done fine so students this much is clear now what happens once a person like i told you that this person was did not have dengue right okay so that person injected that person was injected or took a bite okay hi zen what happened okay that person that person uh, got injected uh, or bit by the mosquito now what is the incubation time what is the incubation time that means with within what or how many days will we know that we have dengue will how will we know that this i am being bitten by an aedes okay that is around 3 to 8 days some places you can also see 3 to 13 days okay it can go up to 13 days okay yes 3 to 8 days that means once you are infected or once you are bit by an aedes aegypti which is infected then you can see the symptoms within 3 to 8 days even up to 3 to 13 days depending on each of our you know the our body mechanism and all of that okay clear so this is your incubation period very very important direct questions can come from the same yes clear <laughs> so okay now this much is clear let's understand the types of dengue right for everything types is there okay everything types is there so here let's try to understand what is the types of dengue how many types are there so it's mainly okay mainly two types are there first one is called first one is called classical dengue so this will be called hip hop dengue correct if this is classical dengue this is called hip hop dengue okay <laughs> yes or no agreed if one is classical another one should be hip hop no that's what it can go 3 to 13 days then that's what i told you in some places you can see 3 to 13 days do not go wrong 3 to 8 days also is the incubation period okay you can see who reports you can see doctors report you can see 3 to 8 days it's possible depending on the mechanism okay fine so here classical dengue over this is called as hemer hagic dengue hemer hagic dengue you can also write it without an a okay hemer hagic dengue okay oh yeah this call also we could have told but uh, hip hop came into my head okay students now classical dengue means what very classic okay very classic very chic slay right all these words are your gen z words right no students classical dengue means what majority of the people get what majority of the people get that means what are the symptoms let's see the symptoms okay classical dengue means most of the people get this or most of the people would have experienced this even including you most of the people experience this <laughs> okay so let's understand in this classical dengue first of all i told you it is called as break bone right break bone fever that means the first thing you will experience is your muscular pain 
ओके मस्कुलर पेन जॉइंट पेन बोन पेन आई डोंट वांट टू राइट बोन पेन बिकॉज़ इट इट डज नॉट ओके मस्कुलर पेन जॉइंट पेन ओके देन यू विल हैव दिस दिस आर द वेरी कॉमन थिंग्स द सेम टाइम यू विल हैव वेरी वेरी सीवियर हेडेक okay this portion right where your eyeball this whole area is there right this whole area eyeball everything because of the amount of blood rush because you know fighting is happening inside right with the virus people are fighting who is fighting antibodies are fighting because of this because of this there is a entire blood rush that is happening here so because of which you will have severe headaches same way you will have entire your eyeball area will be paining okay so pain in your eyeball area the disclaimer every movie has a disclaimer all those who are using phone till 4 o'clock 5 o'clock don't tell i have dengue because my eyeball entire eyeball area is paining i have a headache okay that is not the symptom okay that is not the symptom of your dengue that is because you used your phone till 5 o'clock okay yes clear what is happening see egg development is taking place the blood right because the mosquito needs the blood because it has we are rich in iron and protein our blood is rich in iron and protein that will provide the development for the egg that is going to uh, you know help the egg to get more nourished okay fine great now pain in your eyeball area pain in your eyeball area and students same way you can also have nausea and vomiting nausea and vomiting you can also have your definitely you know dengue first thing when you hear someone say dengue you will tell oh did your platelets count decrease right platelets count decreases do any of you know why the platelets count decreases platelets count decreases any of you know <laughs> if you know students i'll tell you if you google any of your symptoms at the last you will get only one answer you have cancer yes or no yes or no any symptoms for that matter any symptoms for that matter you type at the end you will definitely have one type of cancer because i have experienced this i have you know when i was a student when i was you know uh, your age and all that right i used to google and i used to be like oh no i have cancer right that is how google has become right now because of the amount of symptoms that has been shown symptoms that has been shown okay this is clear this is clear now students why platelets count decreases it is a very um, it is very negative our body does to us okay so what happens students see look here when the virus right when the virus infects okay now what has happened dengue virus has entered the moment dengue virus enters antibodies will realize some foreign particle has entered antibodies will start acting upon now what is going to happen this antibodies will go and attach itself on the platelets and try to rupture the platelets that means it will start breaking down the uh, platelets because of which our own antibodies actually kill some amount of platelets in the body due to which the platelets count is less did you all understand this did you all understand this yes or no yeah i know i told you no i told you at the end you should have one type of cancer at the end of your search history okay yes so students what is happening uh dengue virus has entered our body okay now that virus will be taken in our body like a foreign particle antibodies will start acting upon but this antibodies will go and attach to the platelets and rupture our platelets due to which some amount of platelets is damaged some amount of platelets decreases the moment this virus enters that other than that this virus also goes to the bone marrow where the platelets are formed right there also it will go and try to damage as much damage it can cause this is kind of a mechanism that our body does but it actually in turn reduces the platelets count 
Okay, this is your classical dengue. Okay, these are all the symptoms of your classical dengue. Now, what is hemorrhagic dengue? Okay, students, look here. When I tell about hemorrhagic dengue, it means it is very severe than your classical dengue. Okay, normally a person has classical dengue within say uh, 3 to 10 days, uh, like 3 to 5 days symptoms have occurred. You're going getting tested, everything is done. You start slowly recovering or you start slowly recovering. But in case the dengue again appears in your body, once you got recovered or once you did not do a proper checkup, you thought, okay, it is a normal fever, okay. Students, how can I forget? High fever. High, high fever. Okay, I'll write it here. High fever. Okay, that means it can go up to your 103, 104, 105, up to that. Okay, high fever is a very common, uh, you know, symptom. It is not like uh, slowly it will come. Like it's like, oh, 100, 101, no. It will be very onset, like sudden onset of high fever is a very common, common symptom of your classical dengue. Now, what has happened? All these symptoms have happened. Now, hemorrhagic is more severe. All these symptoms are also there in your hemorrhagic, okay? All these symptoms, you will see it in hemorrhagic also. But what are the additional symptoms? How do I know that I am going to have hemorrhagic type of dengue? The symptoms are students. First symptom is bleeding. First symptom is bleeding. Now, you'll be like bleeding of what? Students, it could be bleeding of, okay? It could be bleeding of gums. Okay? It could be bleeding of your uh, you know from your nose nose sometimes ears okay even from skin okay these from these areas bleeding will occur that means from your nose from your gums from your ears even from your skin okay what is happening your bleeding is going to happen now why bleeding is happening okay why bleeding is happening is mainly because okay it's mainly because yeah okay so students this bleeding is mainly happening is because what happens you know platelets count has decreased correct platelets count has decreased now when your capillaries rupture right when anything ruptures platelets will do the job of blood clotting but because platelets count has decreased, if capillaries rupture, bleeding will happen. Yes or no? Simple? Yes, very good. Clotting factor is missing. Clotting factor is missing. Platelets. Then definitely even a small rupturing or opening of your capillaries will lead to bleeding, which will be shown externally. That's all is happening. So hemorrhagic dengue will have all the symptoms of a classical dengue. But what will be extreme? Bleeding will be seen. At the same way, students, the pain, the joint pain no, also will be very severe. Okay? Severe joint pain. If hemorrhagic dengue continues, a person can also die. Okay, a person can also die because it is already too severe. A lot of loss of blood will happen. Clotting factor is missing. If the person does not go into proper diagnosis, the person can also, death can also happen. Clear? <laughs> Clear to all of you? See, bleeding, see students here in this case also. Okay, in this case also. Let's write here. Rashes will happen. Okay, in the classical dengue, rashes also will happen. Now, this rashes, you know it is because of the hypersensitivity of your skin, inflammation. It is kind of a reaction that some foreign particle has entered. We are reacting, right, to stop that. Now, what happens? This rashes will start the, the inside the capillary because of the continuous fighting and everything capillaries will start rupturing right the capillaries will start breaking now when the capillaries break and platelets are not there to do blood clotting then what is going to happen bleeding will happen bleeding will have even a small scratch even a small wound will lead to excessive bleeding okay this is very severe case and most of them will not go to this case very very few people will have ever entered this kind of a type of a dengue most of them will have classical dengue clear okay yes or no i cannot see reactions is this clear yes okay great <laughs> yes so here students internal bleeding 
okay internal bleeding will happen at uh, your what sometimes even sometimes even you can see blood from the gums nose and ears that is also very very extreme otherwise internal bleeding is how it starts and then it you know exceeds right it will if you do not cure it for a longer time it will start getting worst and worst clear and the same way uh, here whatever is mentioned is that here you will have loss of appetite that you can also see it in your classical dengue also okay loss of appetite you will not feel like eating and very very important very common thing about both of the dengue is you will feel very thirsty you will feel very thirsty okay so that means dehydration i'm writing the uh, symptoms here also okay dehydration is a very very common symptom of dengue you will feel very very thirsty how much ever you know water intake you do also you will still end up feeling thirsty yes can you imagine our heroine did all of this without knowing anything it was just taking care of its family but look at what and all it has ended up doing on the host body okay yes even sometimes when it has become very extreme you can also see blood stains on your urine or in your uh, fecal matter it is possible even during excretion right some amount of blood stains can happen again those are all because of the delay in treatment or not taking care exactly or not just ignoring or you know thinking that it is something else or not proper diagnosis can lead to all of that okay <laughs> yes students see it will go somewhere around here this hemorrhagic dengue here it will go somewhere around 3 to 5 days okay 3 to 5 days here it will go again somewhere around 3 to 7 days it depends okay sometime here even in the second day also you might even you know uh, there will be a sudden onset of fever otherwise there might go up to 3 days so here it is around 3 to 7 days clear great okay now okay now students look here there are also faces what do i mean by faces that means uh, see we all have faces in our life right uh, we have like forget about faces if we talk generally we have a childhood we have a you know uh, we have a teenage face adult face old age right like that we also have faces same way dengue also has faces that means in the starting phase what are the symptoms that is seen in the second phase what are the symptoms that is seen now you can simply connect connect whatever you saw in your classical dengue and hemorrhagic dengue in these faces okay i'll tell you why students look here in uh, faces of dengue fever is mainly of your three types okay so here you can see high fever critical period and uh, recovery period you can also call this high fever uh, portion as your febrile phase okay what is it called feb febrile period okay f e b r i l e febrile period that is your first phase second phase is your critical period third phase is your recovery period now your febrile phase symptoms are very very similar to your classical dengue but whatever you see in your critical period is very similar to your hemorrhagic okay hemorrhagic dengue clear this is why i taught you first the type so this will be easy faces will not be a difficulty now you people have to tell me each of the phase then recovery phase students recovery phase is when both uh, patients you know go under diagnosis and the platelets count slowly increases as the platelets count increases they will see you know rashes going down you know uh, they will start feeling you know hungry thirst will get controlled uh, joint pains will reduce but not like very fast joint pains and muscular pains and all that will reduce very slowly it is a very slow process but otherwise rashes everything will come down okay so phases are clear so students can you all tell me the points of febrile phase now that you know classical dengue symptoms can you tell me febrile phase uh, symptoms yes or no febrile phase symptoms yes yes clear see hemorrhagic and classical 
the difference is that students hemorrhagic you can also say as a severe dengue and uh, when you talk about your classical it is more of your uh, the normal symptoms okay it could be because a person has been affected with more than two times dengue or the person has not properly diagnosed because of that right because of that okay yes very good lot of you are telling many points let's see which are the points you people are telling joint pain yes correct okay i think i've used right okay joint pain so this is the starting phase okay this is the starting phase and this starting phase you will also see the same symptoms okay joint pain you will have muscular pain yes muscular pain what else did you say very good rashes headache eyeball right pain near the eyeball area okay pain near eyeball area nausea vomiting here also you can write dehydration okay no problem dehydration loss of appetite all these are very common it will just continue right so whatever is there in your classical dengue will continue in your hemorrhagic dengue also loss of appetite did i miss anything did i miss anything yes very good okay loss of appetite yeah eyeball paining okay joint pain muscular pain rashes headache pain near the eyeball area nausea vomiting dehydration loss of appetite high fever okay we should not miss that point okay i will write it separately okay febrile phase there is an onset of sudden okay sudden onset of fever and the fever is going to be really extreme okay so it's going to be high fever okay clear very good okay all of you have told all the points good job good job yes <laughs> same thing okay here the rashes are going to be red because there is rupturing of blood vessels so the marks is going to be all red okay around fine let's go to the next phase students it's a critical phase critical phase is very very similar to your hemorrhagic dengue uh, you know students do not get confused with phases and types okay phases means these are the phases a person can undergo now some people will get recovered in the febrile phase some people might go to the critical phase some people after the critical phase they will get into the recovery phase okay some people will go to febrile phase critical phase recovery phase some people will get completely cured during the febrile phase because they would have uh, diagnosed it very early stage they would have understood the moment they had a fever they would have gone and checked they would have done blood test right okay so do not get that confused when i'm talking about types of dengue what do i mean most of it 90% people will have classical dengue but then if they have not diagnosed your classical dengue properly the dengue will reoccur right that virus will still be in the blood because of it it will reappear again and the next time when they are going to have they are going to have hemorrhagic dengue okay i hope this is clear now let's see the points here first point is bleeding right it could be internal bleeding it will be internal bleeding at the first later it will if it gets very worse you will see bleeding from your gums okay so where now you will see gums okay nose ears skin okay and here in this phase also all the uh, you know all the what to tell um uh, symptoms that you saw in your febrile phase will be continued but here it is going to be it is going to be more okay here students very drastic okay very drastic fall of your platelets count okay this is where you will understand that when you are supposed to have 150000 platelets normally a person will have say 150000 platelets it might even drop to thousands okay thousands in febrile phase it might be in thousands like what do i mean by thousands i mean mean 30000 40000 90000 60000 okay but then when it come to critical phase it will go very less right it will go in 5000 6000 7000 numbers even up to 10000 which is very very critical because at this stage there is no blood clotting factor the factor is decreasing completely and because of it it can lead to excessive bleeding okay so the blood clot uh, the blood uh, platelets count decreases drastically okay 
very very drastic decrease okay here also again loss of appetite all this will be seen clear yes severe joint pain okay severe joint pain very good is this clear okay bleeding at very severe cases even death can happen at this situation okay death can happen if the uh, if it is not cured properly very good okay bleeding is the bleeding is the most important one okay yeah, sometimes you if you see uh, who's result also you will see plasma leak okay plasma leak capillaries rupture all this you can put it as bleeding as one point even if plasma leak word is given do not get it confused it will still happen in your critical phase okay critical phase now what is going to happen in the recovery phase that means the person is going to start recovering right so the first recovery phase a symptom before the symptom come is basically platelets count will increase right platelets count starts to increase yes or no right before okay see uh, nandini uh, febrile phase also your platelets count is decreasing but the doctors everyone will be giving you an assurity that the platelets count is going to increase because it might it would have dropped say 60000 it would have dropped to 80000 90000 okay still you are in a stage to very fast go back to your 1 lakh 50000 or say 1 lakh okay but when it comes to critical phase drastic drop of platelets count very fast the platelets count is going to drop in this situation your treatment diagnosis is the only hope you cannot just be you know like people do like uh, they keep taking fluids they keep taking you know painkillers uh, they drink papaya juice kiwi all this consumption increases right in the febrile phase all this is happening that trial and testing period is your febrile phase critical phase no choice you directly will have to get diagnosed at the maximum and even for a longer period of time clear okay <laughs> platelets count decreasing is happening throughout your dengue the moment this virus enters antibodies will start killing our platelets it's going to happen but when it is going to be very very drastic in the critical phase the number is going to be very very fast going to drop down okay fine platelets count starts to increase will be the first stage of your recovery phase that's how a doctor will know that okay this person's condition is improving okay this person's condition is improving how do they know when the platelets count starts to increase slowly you will see the rashes will start disappearing okay rashes will start to disappear that means the fighting which was happening inside your body you know it will start calming down it's just start reducing the redness will start just coming down okay this is all recovery phase so students in recovery phase you can write everything opposite you can write everything opposite to whatever you saw in your febrile phase like a uh, loss of appetite appetite you will start regaining your appetite right you will not have nausea vomiting so you can just write that so whatever recovery phase is happening will start because the platelets count is increasing and blood clot is going to start happening because of it bleeding also will stop internal bleeding also will decrease okay clear okay <coughs> clear okay great okay fine so now that you understood this much now let's see how do we uh, cure it or how do we you know uh if if we have been affected with dengue this is all general knowledge that you need to know okay now students understand there is no vaccine right there is no vaccine our viruses are a main trouble because there is no vaccine no vaccine for it and because of it we have to and there is no direct medicine you know pointing out and telling that okay because of this let the dengue get cured that is also not there because of which we have to do alternative methods now what could be the methods that i could take okay now students since vaccines are not there and i need to understand how did i get the disease or how did i you know actually uh, how did i get the disease i will first do a blood test okay so that will be a first diagnosis your blood test once a person does a blood test they will know what is the count of platelets is it decreasing or increasing how did i get a sudden fever they will understand okay second thing is a very important test okay <laughs> okay are you all with me 
Yes, very correct. Bikram, very correct. Okay, correct. What you told is exactly what is happening. Okay, every every phase platelets count is decreasing, but in critical phase it is very very severe. Okay, critical phase it is very very severe. <laughs> okay, shall we do diagnosis? Yes. So students, it's called it, here. You have a blood test or your complete blood count. Okay. Complete blood count, which is also known as your CBC. Okay. In this situation, you will know what is your uh, what is that platelets count and all that. Okay. Platelets count and all that. Okay. Then, uh, students, other method you can do. You can also do RT PCR. You can. You don't have to know the depth and all that. Just understand. You can also do RT PCR. Okay. Or you can also do specific immunology test. Okay. You can know which is the why is this antibody antigen? What is the interaction that is happening? Okay. So you can say uh, RT PCR. Okay. RT PCR. You can do. Normally at blood test only we will understand platelets count is decreasing. A doctor as soon as they see you, if they see you the entire eyeball is red and you have very high fever, they will tell get your blood test and if the platelets count is decreasing, they will start giving you whatever treatments are required for that. Otherwise you can go for RT-PCR which you did for your COVID, right, which we did for our COVID and then you can also do your antigen antibody, antigen antibody test or your immunology test logical test clear simple no depth you don't know you don't have to know each of this in depth but you should know this there is also one more test called tourniquet test okay tourniquet test is actually <coughs> Tourniquet test. Okay, it's Q. Okay, students, this test is very, um, a very different test. What is going to happen? Now, say this is my hand. Okay, I'm going to put a very tight band. What is going to happen? I'm going to put a very tight band. Now, this band I have put no. Like that, I'm going to put a very tight band here. When I put a very tight band, what is going to happen? If I have dengue, that means my platelet count is less. That means what is happening? If the uh, capillaries have ruptured inside i am going to start seeing very dark red patches on the side of my skin got it all of you got it all of you yes or no <coughs> yes or no tell me quickly is this clear how to do tourniquet tourniquet test yes no no yes yes no no yes See, dengue virus is actually Flaviridae uh, Flavi virus. Okay, that is the actual uh, biological name. Your okay, it's not required for you people. That is why it's not given. Okay, this is the name. Okay, this is the name of your virus. Who asked me? Hari asked me, right? Hari, this is the name. Okay. <laughs> okay, students. So let's revise what it is. Tourniquet test. I've put a band here, very tight band. Okay. If normally also, if you put a very tight rubber band here, have you seen the blood clots? Have you seen redness? Same way, I'm putting a tight band here. What is happening? This side, I'm seeing ra rashes. I'm seeing dark red rashes, very accumulated rashes. The doctor will immediately understand platelets count is less because of which this person's body blood clotting is not happening and there is internal bleeding because of which the rashes have got accumulated. Okay, got it? Yes. Okay, so blood test done, complete blood count. You will check if the platelets count has decreased or not. Okay. Simple platelet count decrease, they will tell you to do get the treatment. Now, RT PCR, like your COVID, you did checking if the virus is there or not. Okay, RT PCR is done. Then, your antigen antibody interaction, you will know exactly how is this antigen antibody interaction. It is a way, it is very complicated. You don't have to know that IgM, IgE, all that will be there. Okay, so it is also called as the immunology test to understand the immune system, how your immune system is working. Then, you have tourniquet test where a band is tied around your hand to see the rashes. Okay, 
when we say accumulation of rashes we will understand that inside capillaries have ruptured and there is no blood clotting happening due to which the rashes have accumulated on this person's hand okay you can see so many rashes in the place where the band was not put okay here the band was put okay here you will start seeing continuous rashes great okay fine now Students, I have added some notes from your WHO, what WHO has told about dengue that I've added here in case you people want to read more about the diagnosis. Okay, I have added each of the points here. You can read it for your reference. Okay, how RT-PCR works or how does the detection happen. See, IgM rapid test, again your immunology test, all that. Okay, which is not required for your, uh, as of now, for your... Uh, you know, for your need, it's not required. But otherwise, if you want to read, please feel free to read and get your information, extra information if you want. Okay. Students, here you have DHS and DSS. It is actually, uh, I'll just uh, mention here. Okay. Students, DSS means your dengue shock syndrome. Dengue shock syndrome is similar whatever happens in your critical phase, right? This dengue shock syndrome. You can see in some places they will say the faces as your um, dengue shock syndrome. Okay, they say like that. That is because again in these phases also the doctor will understand that there is internal bleeding happening because of which this person has to, he is almost in the critical stage. We will have to do the diagnosis very quickly. Do not get it confused. DSS full form is dengue um shock syndrome okay dengue shock syndrome okay sorry yes fine students treatment now how do i treat it i already told you there is no vaccine because vaccine is not that the treatment is going to be very uh, symptom focused okay what am i trying to say if i know that there is no vaccine what am i going to do i'm going to calm down the symptoms right i'm going to try to decrease what are the symptoms that is there? Now, what is the symptom that we have first? We have very bad joint pain. So, what is doctor going to do? Doctor is going to give a painkiller, right? Doctor is going to give a painkiller. Antipuretics will be given, okay? Yes? <coughs> painkiller will be given. Clear or not? antibiotics will be given as the first method of treatment okay second one a lot of fluids will be given if you have seen a person who has dengue they'll be taking a lot of electrolytes okay so that will be the second one a lot of fluid intake is expected from the patient that is the reason if most of you have get, uh, admi uh, got admitted like my dad was admitted because of dengue so what they do is the hospital people itself makes their meals everything will be provided by the hospital itself you just have to get admitted everything will be provided they will only give uh, you know every one hour they will only come and give you fluids they will only give you electrolytes they will give you papaya kiwi whatever fruits is required to increase the platelets count okay at some cases i have also seen people giving um, leaf of papaya juice like you know it's just not papaya with the leaf of the papaya they give so the hospital knows when this person has to take fluid intake so continuous fluid intake will be done what are the fluids that they would uh, ask to intake like your tender coconut okay and uh, your electrolytes ors all those this is one way of treating it okay and the third way of treating it because again this person has a lot of headache and you know all of this the person will be asked to take care of their appetite that means whatever they feed in no that also will be taken care so there is no direct uh, what to tell uh, there's no direct deal to dengue there is only symptom based deal that means oh symptoms are like this i will give a uh, you know i'll give a medicine to just calm down the symptoms so the person is not in lot of pain clear Yes, to suppress the symptoms or to, you know, just calm down the symptoms because the moment the platelets count increases, right? The moment platelets count increases, half of the problems also will uh, reduce. Clear? Clear? <laughs> yeah, that's what once anyone is admitted, you will actually know what are the things they actually do. Okay, what are the things they actually do? So that's all students. Treatments are this much. Fluid intake is there. Painkillers will be given. And then... Um, uh, cold, uh, what did I tell? Cold pu uh, pushing. That means they will keep cold cloth 
Okay, have you seen normally when you have fever also they will keep this uh, cold cloth, you know, they will keep that kind of a cold cloth near their uh, eyes and head so that the entire, the movement of blood, the heat that is there, you know, will get calm. Okay, that's all is the treatment. Fluid intake is the most important, most important. Okay, clear? Again, febrile phase also, I have added some points which you people can uh, check. Lot of words are very complicated because all of this is... Um, what to tell uh, scientific terms and terms which are used in hospitals and by doctors so whichever terms are difficult for you people skip those terms other almost everything is explained everything is explained okay yes again critical phase also i've given information for you people clear can we proceed to chicken gunia yes <coughs> done Yes or no? Are we good to go? <coughs> Students, both of the prevention, I will tell it together because both of the prevention is the same. Okay, both of the prevention is the same. So, I will tell both of the prevention together. Clear? Yes. Fine. Yes, so to increase the platelets count, they just have to take care, right? They just will be given, you know, and see when if a bacteria infection happens we get will be given antibiotics dolo paracetamol will be given here also paracetamol will be given so that the fever decreases as the fever decreases as the fever decreases and the same time the virus feels like okay this host body is continuously attacking me with medicines slowly automatically the virus also will just you know the the infection also will start reducing which will automatically lead to the platelets count so this uh, this to be frank the platelets count is everything okay yes fine students chikungunya again there is no big difference from dengue but what is the major difference from dengue is our who causative agent our causative agent is chikungunya virus Okay, this is our causative agent. Students, um, I wouldn't say refer, uh, you know, all the information on the Google because a lot of the information is even put by people who have been, like who have faced or who is, who was, you know, in past, you know, affected by dengue. So you can always follow WHO's information, whatever is given. I have already added the snips here. So you can just refer to this notes itself. You don't have to go anywhere else. Because if you see 100 videos, 200 videos, the content is going to be the same because we cannot change the virus. Just because Gopika Mom is teaching or just because some other teacher is teaching does not mean the virus will change, right? Information is the same, okay? So what is the major difference between chicken gunia and dengue is that the virus, the causative agent is chicken gunia virus. Yes or no? Got it? Yes, no life cycle. No life cycle is needed. Okay. This is alpha virus. Okay, this is an alpha virus. Like how we had your uh, flavi virus. No, this is an alpha virus. The genus and everything is alpha virus. Okay. And this virus also, student, this virus also, the family, the family it belongs is arbo virus. Now, the moment I say arbo virus, what does it mean? That means this is also from an arthropod. This is also, this is also an arthropod born virus. Now, the uh, question comes, what is the mode of transmission, right? Now, the simple chikungunya virus, right? It is alpha virus. That means the genus and like how we had flavi virus, we have here alpha virus. Arbo virus, that means arthropod born virus. And now, mode of transmission. Mode of transmission students is none other than none none other than our hero in Aedes aegypti our heroine has not left the grounds because this heroine does not know that its body is infected with virus okay the heroine does not know its body is infected with virus it keeps on going and spreading virus clear Yes, yes.
yes great okay again this is also aedes aegypti the same mosquito which causes dengue that is the reason why most of the students will be like what is the actual difference between chikungunya and dengue dengue and chikungunya the major difference is virus if virus is different that means the reactions also are going to be different this is also called as your tiger mosquito that's why i told you i will teach you the prevention together because both of it we have to prevent the mosquito we don't have to do anything else right okay so students this is clear this is clear now what are the symptoms because both of them are very very similar the 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 nature of dengue and chikungunya is similar here the major symptom students it is severe joint pain no uh, you told i will be like ma'am you told the same thing for critical phase also students here severe joint pain i mean the person will be not even able to move the posture the posture with the which the we stand sit and everything posture also will change extreme joint pain which will not get cured even if you get recover from chikungunya there are a lot of people who have joint pain for 2 to 3 years after the Uh, you know virus has been infect got it all of you got it all of you okay so aedes aegypti students aedes aegypti has one very catchy thing is that this aedes aegypti can grow or can breed okay very important it can breed in clean water what did i say you will be like ma'am it only breeds in dirty water like when you pour water in the pond pot right or there is a small pond like thing this aedes aegypti can breed in clean water and this is mainly mainly seen in the daytime okay mainly seen in the daytime your anopheles mosquito is in the night but your aedes aegypti is during the daytime and it can also breed it will mainly mainly prefer to breed in clean water okay so even if you are keeping your water purifier or your can of water open for some time during the daytime if the mosquito you know starts breeding in that water you will not even know okay that's why always keep any kind of container closed fine students the main symptom is severe joint pain in a situation where the person is not even able to move okay the person will not even be able to move other symptoms are the same high fever okay this is the most important symptom most important symptom okay very very important and putting a star there so you people know the difference and high fever rashes okay nausea vomiting okay all this remains the same okay all this remains the same okay and they can also have swollen glands swollen glands clear all of you clear let's quickly revise chikungunya is caused by chikungunya virus which is also belonging to the family arbo virus that means an arthropoda is required or an arthropoda has to act like a vector for the transfer of virus and the vector here also is aedes aegypti which can breed in clean water and it is also seen mostly in the daytime okay everything remains the same here we have alpha virus that we had flavi virus okay again students here the symptoms look similar to dengue but here you will have severe severe joint pain in a situation where you are not able to move and you are also your posture changes you will also see some people bending because of the amount of pain that they have okay it is going to be very severe even after you get cured from chikungunya it can go up to 2 to 3 years for you to get rid of the joint pain that you got okay joint pain that you got now students high fever rashes nausea vomiting swollen glands all the symptoms you also saw in dengue okay yes now diagnosis again diagnosis also remains the same okay first thing uh, here blood test we will see the wbc count but then platelets count if the see when you do blood test actually most of the time what happens whenever a person has dengue or chikungunya one among this there are chances that the diagnosis go wrong 
okay like even sometimes mistakes happen that a person who had dengue was uh, you know treated for chikungunya or a person had chikungunya was treated for dengue for that difference to be clear sometimes people prefer to do blood test in the initial okay because in, in the blood test if they understand that the platelets count has decreased that means definitely that person has dengue okay that definitely that person has dengue students swollen glands means see your tonsils right your tonsils which is there that will start getting swollen okay that means a like a like a throat pain you will have at the initial and then your tonsils will get swollen clear okay that's all is your swollen gland that means this tonsil area this portion where your throat is there you will feel like there is an infection and then you can slowly start seeing the swelling clear whoever asked me sanvi shalini clear okay fine students here also in the initial diagnosis we will do blood test why because to understand in case platelets count is less okay platelets count is less that means this person definitely has dengue okay to make this difference because so many symptoms are similar there are chances that a diagnosis can go wrong because of which this difference is done okay then the next one is again rt pcr rt pcr is done again antigen antibody testing is done okay these are all again your who information information from your many hospitals which actually happens like if a person has chikungunya what are the diagnosis that we do clear again rt pcr is very uh, commonly used otherwise antigen antibody test is used where your igm you know immunology test will be taken place and blood test is done just to understand the difference if that person is having has dengue or chikungunya so that diagnosis does not get mixed up okay clear fine students look here <laughs> blood samples collected during the first week of illness such as reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction okay rt pcr rt pcr is done okay other test can be detected again by your immuno response that is your immunology test which i told you for the virus infection which will be detected and uh, for about 2 months within like by after the infection has happened or after the you know this person has got infected maybe within 1 week we can see the onset again the incubation period goes around similar okay but even if the person has not realized in the first week by the second week we will be able to understand it by with the help of antigen antibody testing clear okay yes <coughs> clear or not fine great okay students prevention for both your uh, chikungunya and dengue okay let's do it together now you tell me are who is our uh, villain villain of the story villain of the story is aedes that means it's a mosquito now to prevent mosquito what are the things i need to do first of all i need to make sure cleanliness or hygiene right hygiene in the place that i stay Yes or no? Can all of you tell me one one point how to you know how you have all learned, okay, to you know prevent mosquitoes in your EVS? Yes, diagnosis for both. Where here we will not prefer blood test mainly. We will be doing RT PCR and immunology test. That is your antigen antibody test. Okay, um, blood test is only done in cases where the person is having the starting of the joint pain but looks very similar to dengue to do the difference. Clear? okay yes to avoid the heroin okay we should not let any stagnant water right stagnant water that students because aedes can breed in clean water this becomes a problem because even if you are not like see in an area where rainy season these mosquitoes come out very commonly in case the water is dirty also this aedes aegypti does not will not breed that much but if the water is clean it will breed so you have to make sure that there is no kind of stagnant water in your home okay so stagnant water completely avoid okay then what you can do you can add see if there is stagnant water somewhere and you are not able to do anything about it then you can add kerosene kerosene oil 
okay on the top of it why because oil will make sure that the dissolved oxygen does not go in there is no breathing space for them okay so kerosene oil they actually this they used to do very olden days now you have like how we have uh, like hit for uh, cockroach there is also for mosquitoes right hit for mosquitoes also <coughs> yes all out yes gambusia very good okay Students, same way like Gambusia fish, you can also have dragonflies. Okay, which is uh, see very not not very practical. Dragonflies are not easy to catch and keep and all that. But you know, dragonflies feeds on mosquitoes. So if that area has good amount of trees, uh, flowers, and everything, dragonflies will automatically get attracted. And if dragonflies are not there, mosquito will not be there. Correct. Same way, you should use good insecticides. Okay, insecticides. should be used so that the protection happens properly okay and now say all this is done but still mosquitoes are not reducing you can use for yourself you can use mosquito repellents creams are there right all of you know that right mosquito repellent creams are there creams roll on so many things are there so apply that all over your body because at some places we cannot do anything the amount of water we cannot control the amount of breathing we cannot control at that point you can wear mosquito repellent creams same way if you feel that there is an onset of dengue somewhere or chikungunya somewhere try to uh, you know cover your arms wear full clothes okay wear full clothes so you protect yourself when you go out from mosquito bites yes ha huh, good night all that uh, ads it will become of like ad i'm doing ad for them okay so you can buy whatever your good night your uh, i don't know students only good night eh? mosquito coil all that you can buy and if again situation is getting worse you can also use your mosquito nets to sleep okay mosquito nets to sleep so this is our entire prevention of both your chikungunya and your dengue okay chikungunya and your dengue okay because both of them are the same heroin has to be killed 80s okay students you can use kerosene shena you can use kerosene oil on the water which is there so that it does not allow them for breathing more and it does not allow exchange of gases and same way for them to breathe okay so that is why we should always put oil in case there is a stagnant water clear Yes, correct. Very good. Mosquito spray, mosquito repellent, whatever you people want to use, you can use. Are we good to go? Yes. Yes. Fine. Shall we have a rapid fire? Students, ah, uh, see, male Aedes does not have the apparatus. to bite and take the blood from us for you know because they are not laying eggs or anything but this male uh, aedes aegypti mosquitoes will feed on this plant sap and all that okay plant sap and all that okay let's have a rapid fire because the topics are so similar i will just ask you people some questions Let's quickly finish because we have a session at seven o'clock. For those who does not know that seven o'clock, you can come and ask us any questions related to our childhood, our college days, our need preparation, and some things that you want to know from us. Okay. Okay, which is not very personal. We will definitely answer. Okay, we are going to have a very relaxing session with all the. teachers and you students okay so do not miss the live it's going to be beyond neat nothing about neat will be in that conversation we are having so it is going to start at 7 o'clock so let's finish the rapid fire in 2 minutes and you all can take a break drink your coffee and 7 o'clock we'll join back all of you will be there okay it's going to be so much fun because our year is ending and 2024 is the biggest year for all my neat students and a biggest year for us because we as teachers are going to you know our names are Uh, our efforts are going to be finally shown when you finish your exam on May fifth, two thousand twenty-four, which is going to be right. Two thousand twenty-four is going to be in another one day, so we are all excited. So we thought, why not give you people a little bit relaxation, okay? Because our Super Six series also has been going amazing for two weeks now, right? Okay, so students, first question. Let's do it quickly. Okay, first question. 
tell me the family that chicken gunia virus belongs to the family the family chicken gunia virus belongs to okay quickly <coughs> i think i'll see it here shots are late there yes yes quickly tell me which is the virus right which is the yes very good arbo virus that means it is born from an arthropod right okay tell me tell me the first and the last first okay listen carefully first and the third phase of dengue first and the third phase of dengue quickly very good who told arbo virus first hari told hari sanvi vishnu kashi rishika shadat very good kishor all of you are actually very very close to each other yes yes very good shubha very good thank you sankri yes very good febrile students is f e b r i l e okay febrile and recovery phase okay febrile and recovery phase okay yes next question next question why does what does aedes aegypti require from our blood why does aegypt like why does it bite us or what is the requirement why does it need our blood human blood why does it need our human blood how did you feel hari do not forget to let me know in the comments if you are attending my session for the first time okay do not forget to comment because it helps me understand how every student when they join my class how do they feel very good who told first yes arshit nandini pranav very good right iron and protein iron and protein they require from our blood okay yes good job okay students give me a test give me a test or a diagnosis where we use a band to tie around the arms and to see the rashes to see the rashes <laughs> tell me a test thank you hari tell me a test where you will tie a band around the hand okay and with that you will understand if the rashes like if there is rupturing of your capillaries or not very good archit very good archit nandini hari sanvi pranav rishika very good very good okay tourniquet test tourniquet test okay very very good okay last question last question to all of you what is the incubation period what is the incubation period for dengue what is the incubation period for dengue <coughs> very good very good very good answers okay students uh, let's also write chikungunya is 3 to 5 days okay okay last you can write chikungunya is 3 to 5 days so tell me for dengue what is the incubation period for dengue Yes wow i cannot even find out who is the first person that fast you people are amazing kishor b nancy pranita reddy oh i can see some diksha ma'am students also students i studied punjabi one word kidda <laughs> i hope i'm pronouncing is right so i'll tell ma'am okay diksha ma'am students also are here very nice to see very good 3 to 8 days Okay what about chikungunya what is the incubation period for chikungunya 
yes 3 to 8 days or else it can go up to 3 to 13 days okay some places you will see 3 to 13 days do not get it confused you can write 3 to 8 days okay students what is chicken gunia what is the incubation period for chicken gunia just now i told let me see how many of you listened yes yes quick very good sharat very good chicken gunia is 3 to 5 days okay 3 to 5 days amazing amazing so i hope this class was helpful i have covered everything that you need for dengue and chicken gunia so do not go anywhere we are coming back we are going to have a chit chat for this new year to make our new year better to make your new year better and if you are facing any problem that we are not able to address during our lives because that will you know it will disturb the students who are watching it later so all that we will be doing it now in our chit chat session where we will relax talk to each other understand each other and you can also get some secrets about us not all the secrets but some secrets about us okay so see you all sharp at seven o'clock seven seven ten max we will all be joining okay so sharp at seven o'clock do not forget to share it with your friends also we will all be like a round table conference online and offline right so yes students thank you so much for joining this is the last class for 2023 and we will all see each other in the next year okay i will be doing human health and diseases on jan 7 and head gp and fingerprinting which i did not do in molecular basis of inheritance i will be doing it on jan 2nd okay so you will have my class first for this year you will start uh, your uh, journey by seeing my face okay so yes okay molecular basis of inheritance the rest of the part the hgb fingerprinting and i also want to clarify avery mcleod and mccarty experiment also which is a little confusing from the results told in uh, ncrt and the results there so that whole clarification we will do it on jan 2nd okay so quickly go take a coffee break and come back at seven o'clock i'll be right here and we will all see each other okay thank you so much yes Happy New Year to all my students in advance. I will also wish you after some time. Okay. So have a safe New Year. Okay. I have a very beautiful year because 2024 is the most precious year for me as a teacher and for you as a neat aspirant. Okay. So next time in 2024, we are going to meet as MBBS first year student and me as a teacher itself. Okay. Yes, thank you so much students. Do not forget to comment how you felt about the session and also like the session without the fail. Oh no, I did not check the attendance. How can I not check your attendance? Students, no, you people haven't liked the session. You people have bunked my classes. So quickly hit the like button. The number has to cross 100. Come on, come on. Let's make it 100, more than 100. Don't you think this session requires more than 100? Come on, come on, let's make it 100 and yes good job good job good job see so many people are bunking the class yes we will see at seven o'clock so be here and yes okay like that session also like this session also and also comment see you students bye